Stop. Catch him right on the chin. Boom, boom. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Boom. Bang. Right on the butt. Overhand looping left. Yeah. I counted him. See, he threw a punch first. And uh, that was that's what made him open. He's a real defensive fighter, and it's really hard to get into those defensive fighters. They don't have many open shots, but when he threw a punch, I, uh, I countered with a strong looping left and caught him right on the button. Okay, Tony, I know you've got to go to the hospital and get some stitches. Congratulations right. on your win. Thank you, Joe Stone, take it away. All right, a good victory for Tony Bazooka DeLuca on the verge of perhaps being stopped himself in round four. We're coming back to San Diego, and we'll do it in a moment. We told you at the outset of our telecast this evening, we thought we would have an outstanding night of fights here in San Diego, California. And I'll tell you what, Tony Bazooka de Luca, Pedro, right on the verge of perhaps losing his second fight in a row for the first time ever, comes out strong the way contenders have to fight. Have to. He fought like a champion tonight, without a doubt. Look for Tony Luca to do things at 108 pounds if the scar tissue over that eye can heal. Tell you one thing for sure, Tony Bazooka DeLuca will be out of service at least for the next couple of months. I have a feeling that his people, Bustamante and company, are going to keep their fighter out and make sure he gets healthy and that scar tissue gets formed. I would say six months, maybe some plastic surgery. That long? Maybe. All right, for Pedro Fernandez, I'm Phil Stone. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next month on our next ProBox telecast. Goodbye, everybody. American civilization, architects of elaborate pyramids and masters of mathematics. They also had a reputation as fierce warriors, a reputation that carries over to modern boxing history. Fighters like Daddy Little Red Lopez, Salvatore Sanchez, Julio Cesar Chavez have built a legacy true to their heritage. Michael Carvajal. Mexican medalist becomes the first bad team to fight for a professional title before a hometown crowd. A warrior true to his heritage, undefeated Michael Carvajal pursues his American dream live on NBC Sports World. We're at the Civic Plaza, downtown Phoenix, for this NABF Junior Flyweight title bout with 27-year-old Tony DeLuca defending his crown against the highly regarded Michael Carvajal. Hi, everybody. Marv Albert with the fight doctor, Ferdy Pacheco, and this a matchup of a hard-working brawler going against a stylish Olympic hero. Michael Carvajal comes in with a record of 11-0, seven by knockout, but with extensive amateur experience over 100 amateur bouts. DeLuca, record of 17 and two, three draws, only six by knockout. He's had far less amateur competition. Tony Bazooka DeLuca is out of Portsmouth, New Hampshire, now lives in San Diego. He attends San Diego State University. He is majoring in marketing. In fact, Ferdy was uh, telling us last night that he has a midterm coming up in managerial accounting this Wednesday. Well, he can apply to Don King for a job. He's always looking for good accounting. And also, it's a great thing for a boxer to be an accountant these days. It's a good complimentary career. Never thought of it uh, like that. Yeah, True. I think those things. Yes, uh, DeLuca is a southpaw, likes to switch up occasionally between right and left. What problems, if any, would that pose for Carl? None at all. He's got to face a hostile audience a great fighter in uh, Carvajal as far as a technician is concerned. Important in that the tissues around his right eye are very soft and sensitive. They break open.
to have in other fights, then he's got a passel of trouble to worry about. A passel of trouble, perhaps, and here comes Michael Carvajal. He is next of the Olympic light flyweight silver medalist. Moments away from a scheduled 12-rounder against Tony Bazooka DeLuca, what could be the toughest test in his professional career. This is NBC Sports World, and today it's brought to you because there are no unimportant parts. And by Domino's Pizza. Hot, fresh, delicious pan pizza. Domino's Pan Pizza. Nobody delivers better. Sunday double hands of Stone, and he'll be looking to use those hands in a rapid fashion against Tony DeLuca, who is certainly candid in analyzing his boxing skills. We talked with DeLuca earlier today. I'm not the world's best fighter, but I work very hard at it, um, physically and mentally, and, and so by the time I get into the ring, I know what I can do, I know what I've got to do, and I'm ready to go. I'm the champ. Well, he is the NABF Junior Flyweight Champion, won the crowd by defeating Willie Salazar in a 12-round decision last August, but the NABF version is merely a stepping stone. The goal here is to fight the IBF title holder, Wang Shea Kitakasem of Thailand. Michael Carbajal attempting to become the first 1988 U.S. Olympian to fight for a world title. Carbajal at five. He's scoring on the 10-point must system handled by three judges, Aaron Kaiser of Phoenix, Vince Delgado from Los Angeles, and Chuck Diampa out of Las Vegas. There is no standing eight count. Three knockdown rule is in effect. Three knockdowns in a round and the bout is over. And the bell can save the fighter only in the 12th and final round. Michael Carbajal began his professional career last February on the Roberto Duran. Iran Barkley on the card was victorious in a uh, four-round decision. Luka has the heart and tenacity, very aggressive, but Bertie Carbajal, the more accomplished fighter and a faster, more effective puncher. And I think the um, that Carbajal is in the pose, whereas um, the Olympics showed that he was a is an accomplished boxer and he's patient. He's very took lead and then making pay. And Luca, as we mentioned earlier, opening up southpaw, but from time to time he will try to switch up. If he does, it's to his disadvantage. I, I think he needs to go with what got him here with the very best that he's got, which is the uh, left hand stance. And he thinks that, you know, he's got that trigger temper, has Carvajal, as, as, in spite of as patient as he is and as beautiful boxer as he is, he's not afraid to mix it up. And it's not to his advantage with DeLuca. EF Championship Cup. The Lucas' most recent fight last November, San Diego, won a 10-round decision over Abraham Garcia. The Lucas began his professional boxing career in 83. He was a Golden Gloves champion as a flyweight in Massachusetts. We'll be back in Phoenix in a moment. Two in Phoenix, we're at the Civic Plaza. There's no mouthpiece here. There's no mouthpiece. The Luke is saying, where's my mouthpiece? His corner is arguing, and the referee is giving him time. We should call time out here. This is uh, highly irregular. And the clock continues to run. There is no timeout taken, so 18 seconds elapsed. Wow, that's... That's all right, and, and it, now now they're handing the mouthpiece in. He started to fight without the mouthpiece. Of course, it, um, I can't see that. I, I I don't know why. They just didn't count it at the timeout. And the referee, Al Munoz, has it uh, in his left hand. And at the appropriate time, according to the rules of the Arizona Athletic Commission, the referee, there it is, puts it in his mouth. And uh, you hear the reaction from the crowd. I would think on the... Uh, the checklist of it is definitely number one, and it's amazing how many times even experienced cornermen uh, miss that. But when you have inexperienced people, that happens. These guys, um, are, one of them has got a century of experience in there. He should have known better. 
And that is uh, Juan Bustamante, who is a very, very veteran.